Hello everyone, today's tutorial is about topological sorting on graphs, which is a very interesting and useful algorithm. So first of all, we'll discuss what is a directed acyclic graph and what is the concept and need for topological sorting. Later on, we will dive into the applications of topological sorting and we will also discuss two algorithmic approaches. One is a DFS based approach and another is a BFS based approach known as Khan's algorithm for topological sorting. Not just the theory part, we will also discuss code and we will implement these two algorithms in today's video. But before we get started, make sure to check out free masterclasses on Scalar's event page to learn from the, some of the best industry experts. Also, subscribe to our channel if you haven't done already. Let's dive right in. Let us start with the definition of topological sorting. So it is defined for directed acyclic graph, also known as DAG. And what is this? It is a linear ordering of vertices such that for every directed edge u v, vertex u comes before v in the ordering. Now, what does it really mean, right? So this looks a bit complex. So let me say I have to first understand what is a directed acyclic graph. So basically, consider a graph like this. Let's say I have a. It has a directed edge to b, and it has a directed edge to c, and let's say b has a directed edge to c and it has a edge to d right now suppose this is is this graph directed yes this graph is directed acyclic that means the graph should not contain a cycle so if i draw another graph in which a is connecting to b b is connected with c and c is connect c is pointing to a right is it a acyclic graph the answer is no right the answer is no now think of this graph as a dependency graph for example b is dependent upon a C is dependent upon B and A is dependent upon C. So if you have to start from one task, right? Let's say this is a dependency graph of tasks. Can you start with any task? The answer is no, because there would be a deadlock, right? In this case, there is a complete de deadlock because A, B is dependent upon A, C is dependent upon B, A is dependent upon C. So there is a deadlock. So we cannot do really anything here, right? But look at this graph. Now suppose each node represents a task that you can do, right? So will there be any deadlock? The answer is no. In this case, there won't be any deadlock. So, and also if you look carefully, there is no cycle here, right? So this is a acyclic graph. And of course it is a graph, right? So hence the term DAG. So the first graph I have drawn here is an example of directed acyclic graph. This is an example of a directed graph, but it is cyclic in nature. Here there will be no deadlock, right? Now let us try to understand what does it mean linear ordering of vertices such that for every directed edge u to v vertex u comes before v in the ordering. So now b is dependent upon a right that means if you need to execute task b a must be done before right. If c is dependent upon b and a that means in order to execute task c you must do b and a before and d is dependent upon c right. So basically d has a dependency on c, c has a dependency of, upon a and B, right? But the thing is between A and B, what task you should do before, right? So you should do A, right? So you should do A first. If A is done, then this dependency is removed. This dependency is removed, right? Then you, you can do B. So if B is done, dependency of C is removed. You can do C. And if C is done, dependency of D is removed. You can do D, right? So this order of vertices is called topological ordering of vertices right so that for every directed edge u to v vertex u comes before v in the ordering right so there is an edge from a to b so a is coming before b there is an edge from a to c a is coming before c there is an edge from b to c b is coming before c and there is an edge from c to d c is coming before d right so you can see all the edges they are in this direction so from any vertex u to any vertex v so I hope you understood the definition of topological sorting. And now we will discuss one more example where this kind of algorithm might be useful. So you have got a fairly basic idea about topological sorting. So ideally the main use case of this kind of algorithm is in resolving a dependency graph, right? So main use case will be resolving a dependency graph. Of course, there are many more applications which we will discuss at the end of this tutorial. But what this algorithm is doing, it is resolving a dependency graph. Now, where this dependency graph? So one example I can give you is 
that when you are installing some kind of uh, let's say libraries on your server or some modules on your server right so it is possible that there is a module a uh, or there is a module b which is dependent upon a there is a module c which is dependent upon b there is a module d which has a dependency upon b and a there is a module e which is dependent upon e and c right now if you have to install all these modules on your server right you cannot say i will install e first no i cannot install b first right so there has to be a specific ordering in this case that ordering might look like you go with a then you go with let's say b then you can go with let's say c okay but if there is an edge from here to here then you have to go with d first then you can go with c and then you can go with e right so the installation has to proceed in the following steps right in the following order right so this is where software needs to construct a dependency graph of the modules that needs to be installed because there are certain dependencies right so this is one example from the computer science world just to keep things simple let us try to understand from a real world example so we are taking an example of baking cake right so we are saying okay in order to bake the cake there are certain steps needs to be followed for example you have certain ingredients flour baking powder baking soda yogurt oil before you put all of them in into baking you have to mix all of them right so ba basically there is a dependency you have to mix the ingredients and then you can bake right then but if you before you actually put this into the pan the pan must be greased and floored properly right so basically before putting the ingredients into the pan what you have to do you have to grease and oil the pan right again there is a dependency before you put the ingredients you have to grease the pan right once you have poured the batter you know you need to bake it well but again before you bake you must preheat the oven so again there is some dependency right you have to preheat the oven before you do something right to ice the cake it must be cool but to cool you must bake it first so basically before you cool the cake the cake must be baked again there is a dependency the cake has to be cooled before you can actually ice it so icing has a dependency on cooling cooling has a dependency on baking baking has a dependency on mixing and of course there is some dependency between uh, pan and putting the ingredients right now this this looks like there are various tasks and there are various dependency for each task right but of course there would be some tasks which do not have any dependencies those form the starting point of our topological sorting right so if you visualize all these steps in the form of a graph it will look something like this right so preheat oven now this does not have any dependency greasing the pan this does not have any dependency right so you can say okay in the beginning i can do this i i can do this this can be one this can be two or this can become the first step this can become the second step and of course once this is done you cannot of course jump into baking right so you have to do this stuff as well you have to mix ingredients add it to the pan so this can become three uh, this can become maybe four this can become five and of course if you follow all these steps in a particular order you will be able to bake the cake right so i hope you understand the concept of topological sorting is used in resolving dependency graphs now we will look at two algorithms to do this so let's begin with the algorithms now let us discuss the implementation of topological sort so right now i want to uh, complete this function topological sort which does not get any input so we have to pick what is the starting point from what node should i really start right so just like dfs we will build this method right so first of all we will build a boolean visited array which is going to be a boolean array for all the v vertices Apart from it, I need a list, list of integers that will actually store the output. So this is going to be, let's say we use an array list. And initially it is an empty list and you can mark everything as not visited. So again, that is completely optional. So if you want to explicitly set everything to false, you can use arrays.fill method and you can set everything to false. Nothing is visited in the beginning, right? So in the graph, when we were doing DFS, we knew the source. What is the starting point? Here we do not really know the source. Now suppose if my um, graph is like this. Let me draw a graph. Let's say I have 0, 1. It is connected with let's say 2. 0 is also connected with 2. It is connected with 3. Then it is connected with 4. Like this, like this and like this. 
Now this is an example of a directed acyclic graph. Now should I start with zero? Should I start with one? Should I start with three? I really do not know, right? So what I will do, I will put a loop and I will start from every node that is not visited, right? Or let us just assume that we start from node zero. Will it traverse the entire graph? The answer is no. So if you start from zero, you visit this node, then you go to two, you visit this node, maybe then you go to five, you visit this node and then you backtrack. So you put five into your list. You come back to two. Can you go anywhere else? Yes, you can go to four. So you visit four. Now you again backtrack because you cannot go anywhere else. So you put four into the list. Now what happens? You come back at two. You cannot really go anywhere. You cannot go anywhere. So you again backtrack. So you put two into the list. You come back at zero. You cannot go anywhere. You put zero into the list, right? So if I do do it this way, because there can be many starting points. So you can start with zero. You can start with one. You can start with three and so on, right? So there can be many starting points, but if you start from let's say zeroth node, you are not able to traverse the entire graph, right? So again, there are nodes one and three which are not yet visited. So what I will do, I'll say okay, I will put a loop for i equal to zero for all the vertices. If a node i is not visited, I will again make a call to visit the graph from that node, right? So now I discover okay, from zero I made a call. This is visited. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, right? So I can say okay. Yeah, is one visited? The answer is no. So I can make a DFS call from one as well, right? So I can say, okay, go and visit. From one you start, you cannot go to two, but you can go to three, right? So you you visit one, you visit three. Now from three you cannot go anywhere. You backtrack, so you put three into the list, and then again you come back at one. You cannot go anywhere. You put one into the list, right? And then you reverse this, so you get one, three, zero, two, four, five. Is it a correct order? The answer is yes. From one to three there is an edge. From 0 to 2, there is an edge. From 1 to 2, there is an edge. From 2 to 4, there is an edge. And from 4 to 5, there is an edge. From 2 to 5, there is an edge. From 3 to 4, there is an edge, right? So you can see all the edges are in this direction, and hence this ordering is actually correct for this graph, right? Of course, many orderings are possible. You can have an ordering in which 0 and 1 are coming first because they do not have any dependency, right? But this is also correct. So if I do it using DFS, this might be the order I will be getting, right? So what I will do instead of saying that always start from node zero, I will say, okay, always start from a node that is not yet visited. So I equal to zero, I less than V, I plus plus. Now, of course, the same DFS function will not exactly work. We have to add the backtracking step in our DFS code as well. So I will write a separate function void topological dot helper which is essentially nothing but a dfs function so this is going to accept the node at which i am currently at i'm going to give a boolean visited array then i'm going to get uh, an output array as well so i can say int output so this is a array list so let's just keep it as list of integers right so i'm getting the output array as well right so maybe I'll scroll a little bit, right? Now when you're reaching a node, the, what is the first step? So you print it, but here we don't need to print it. We need to push it into the list while going back, right? So we'll mark the node as visited. So we can say, okay, um, visited of node, this is equal to true. Then I will iterate on the neighbors. So what are the neighbors? Of course, we have to initiate the call as well. Topological sort helper. So this call will be done if a node has not been visited, right? So if not visited, I right. see when you call from zero, you have visited two, four, five, right? So you will not initiate a call from two, four, five, but you will initiate a call from one, right? So I'll give ith node, I'll give the visited array, I will get the output array, right? So I think this function looks complete almost. So we have to return the output as well. And we have to reverse the list collections dot reverse output right so this this is the wrapper function for topological sort and here is the dfs call that we are making this is output right so i have to mark the node as visited then i have to traverse the neighbors which are not visited right so traverse the not visited neighbors recursively right so this thing is pretty simple. We can use the same logic that we did in DFS. We'll create an iterator 
will iterate over the adjacency list and will make a recursive function call. So I'll just copy paste this code here. So we have an iterator. So if the node is zero, the neighbor is just two. If the node is two, the neighbors are four and five. So we'll iterate to get the neighbor. And if it is not visited, we will make the call to topological dot helper neighbor visited and the third is output we need to give it right so once it is done what do i do now i can say okay yes i have visited all the neighbors from the given node now i'm going to backtrack i'm going to go back so in this step what i will do in my output i'm going to add the current node right that's it that completes my back backtracking step right so let us first uh, run our code and see are we getting the expected output so i'm going to go into the main so i have already created this graph right so this is the same graph you can verify and i've called the g dot topological sort method so let's go and see what output do we really get so adjacent list will depend upon in what order we have so we are actually getting one three zero two four five which is exactly same same as this one three zero two four five that means the algorithm is working absolutely fine so if you want i can give you a quick dry run of this algorithm right so what i did initially nothing was visited nothing was visited let me do it with blue color so i start with zero zero is not visited i visit this node and i make i see this is not visited i make a dfs call that is topological sort helper from this node and what this function does it look it marks this node as visited so this is visited now and we iterate over the neighbors so the neighbor is just two two is not visited so we make a call to two okay again two says okay what are my neighbors the neighbor is five and four so maybe um, we make a call to five we go here and five sees i i do not have i don't have any neighbors so this loop is complete for five and i say output dot add so this five is added in my output right and now i back go back so i come back from five back to this node so at two i see okay i can go to four so i make a call to four four says okay i cannot go to five so four's neighbor is just five five is already visited i cannot go there so i just try to go back so i add four into my list i come back at two two says i cannot go any further so i just backtrack so i add two into the list and go back to zero zero says i cannot go any further i add myself to the list and that's it so this recursive call is complete now we come down here we check okay zero is visited fine is one visited the answer is no one is not visited so i again initiate a dfs call from one okay from one i cannot go to two it's already visited can i go to three yes i can go to three so I go to three, I mark it visited from three. I cannot go any further. So I just come back. So I push three into the list using the above code, right? And from one, I cannot go any further. So I push one into the list. So finally, this list is ready. And here I reverse this list to get this output, which is reflected here, right? So I hope you have understood the code. It's pretty easy, fairly simple. The only change that we have made is we are adding the node here and since all the nodes might not be visited so we initiate a dfs call from every part of the graph which is not visited right so finally we return the output and that is printed so that's about the implementation of topological sort using dfs let us discuss one more algorithm for topological sort this is a popularly known as kahan's algorithm and it is a bfs based algorithm so the first step of this algorithm is you always have to start with vertices which do not have any incoming edges that means zero dependency okay so no incoming edges so i'm going to define a term that is called as in degree so in degree is basically number of edges that are entering every node so what we will do we'll construct a in degree array by reading the adjacent list so if you have the adjacent list that might look like this so 0 is connected with 2 and 5 1 is connected with 2 and 3 2 is connected with 4 and 5 
थ्री इज कनेक्टेड विद फोर फोर इज कनेक्टेड विद फाइव आई गेस आई हैव कवर्ड ऑल द एजेस टू फोर सिक्स एट सो वन टू थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स सेवन एट या सो वॉट वी विल डू इनिशली इन डिग्री ऑफ ऑल द नोट इज जीरो एंड देन वी विल से ओके फ्रॉम जीरो टू टू देर इज एन एच सो इन डिग्री ऑफ टू इट्स गोइंग टू बी वन जीरो टू फाइव देर इज एन एच सो इन डिग्री ऑफ फाइव इज गोइंग टू बी वन वन टू टू देर इज एन एच सो इन डिग्री ऑफ टू विल बी इंक्रीमेंटेड बाय वन वन टू थ्री देर इज एन एच सो दिस विल बी वन टू टू फोर देर इज एन एच सो दिस विल बी वन टू टू फाइव देर इज एन एच सो इन डिग्री ऑफ फाइव विल बी इंक्रीमेंटेड बाय वन थ्री टू फोर देर इज एन एच सो इन डिग्री ऑफ फोर विल बी इंक्रीमेंटेड बाय वन फोर टू फाइव देर इज एन एच सो इन इन डिग्री ऑफ फाइव विल बी इंक्रीमेंटेड बाय वन दिस इन डिग्री विल बी नाउ थ्री सो इफ यू लुक केयरफुली वॉट यू विल गेट so you, you now know how many edges are entering each node so if you talk about five three edges are entering five right so from the adjacent list you can easily create this array right now this array contains one very important piece of information what is that information that what are the nodes which have actually zero in degree so we know that zero and one they have zero in degree right so what i will do from this in degree array Uh, we will use another data structure that is used in bfs so th this data structure is queue right so we will queue up all the nodes which do not have any incoming edges so we can traverse this array and we find out 0 and 1 are the nodes which do not have any in degree so that means these are the tasks i can perform without waiting for any any one right so i can directly execute 0 now suppose i pop out one node i execute this task 0 so 0 is gone 0 is printed and these connections these edges are now lost why because these dependencies are gone right these dependencies are gone so i'll just make them dotted right or i can just erase them that's fine right if i do this that means in degree of 2 and 5 they will go down so in degree of 2 will be now 1 and in degree of 5 will be now because one edge has been gone right so you pop out this node you print it and you decrement the in degree of edges originating from this node the next node you can pop as one okay if you look at one it can be removed yes so you will print one and you can remove this edge that means in degree of 2 will be now zero and it should be added into the queue right because now this node is ready and one Also has this edge, so this will be also removed. So in degree of three is also going to be reduced by one. So this in degree is also zero. That means three is also ready to be processed. There is no dependency, so you can push three into the queue as well, right? So next you can pop out two. So two will be removed. You will print two, and you can delete these edges. So that means in degree of five will be reduced by one. So this in degree will be one. So right now I'm not going to push five because it still has a dependency. What about four? Four in degree is two, so it can be removed. It can be reduced by one. So this in degree is going to be one. Okay, and of course these edges are gone, right? These edges are gone. That means now what is the thing we will pop out? We can pop out three. We will say okay, fine. We will print three, and then we will remove it, right? that means this edge will be gone so in degree of 4 will become zero so if in degree of any node becomes zero you have to push it into the queue right add it to the queue next you will pop out 4 and you will print 4 and this edge will be gone right that means 4 is printed in degree of 5 is now zero right because 4 to 5 there was an edge right so in degree of all the neighbors of 5 4 will go down by 1 So this will become zero, and that means now five is ready to be processed. So you push five into the queue, then you finally pop out five. You print five, and you can see queue is now empty. So that means we are done with the algorithm, and we will stop. Right. So pretty easy. Right. So I hope you understood the algorithm. Next, we will look at the implementation in Java. So let us implement this algorithm that we have just discussed. So first of all, I am going to create an array that is going to store the in degree for every vertex. So it will be an array of integers. So I can call it as in degree, and I know there are v nodes. So I will create an array of size v. So new int of size v. 
so initially i can say everything will be zero so i'm going to fill this array with zero values and now i'm going to build this array so for that i need to travel through the adjacency lists so i have v nodes and for every node there is a adjacency list so we need to create a list iterator like we have done earlier and we need to iterate it iterate over the uh, list so i'll just copy paste some code here we don't need the visited thing here because it's not a cyclic graph and we are doing bfs so i don't think visited array will be needed here okay and we did not use it in the algorithm as well so i can say okay i'm going to create an iterator for the ith node then i'm iterating over the ith node now suppose there is a there is edge from let's say ith node to nodes x y and z in that case what will happen your in degree of x will increase y will increase and z will increase so i'm just generalizing this with the term neighbor so in degree of neighbor will be incremented by 1 so i'm going to say okay fine let me say in degree of neighbor plus plus right so after this for loop i will have in degree of every node so create a or i can say basically update the in degree array this is what i'm doing i'm going to set the initial values here right so update the in, in degree array so th these are the initial values right so right now we have not started the bfs we have just built the in degree array right and i will also create one more data structure that is going to be the queue for the bfs so i can say okay queue of integer q this is equal to new linked list right so linked list is the class that provides implementation for the queue interface and then we can say uh, we'll need one more data structure that is the output in which i'm going to store the output so that can be a array list or it can be a array so i prefer array list here so I will say okay, um, list of integers, let's call it as output and this is equal to new array list. So this we will use in the in our algorithm, right? Now the next step of the algorithm would be that you want to do BFS. So you need to initialize your queue with all the nodes that have zero in degree. So for that you have to travel through the in degree array. So you have to traverse in degree array and uh, find nodes with zero in degree. That means they can be the starting point. They don't have any dependency. So I can say okay for int i equal to zero, i less than v, i plus plus. If in degree of ith node, if it is zero, then this can be added into the queue. Now you have initialized your queue. And now you can do your BFS, right? So you can say while my queue is not empty, I will uh, remove something. So I can say, okay, node is queue dot whole. Now you will suppose you removed a node. Suppose you removed a node zero, and it was connected with some other nodes, right? Zero was connected with this node, this node, right? Let's say one and two. So we'll say, okay, whatever the neighbors of zero, since these edges are now going to remove in degree of two which was two there were two incoming edges so it will be reduced by one right so i can, i need to again find the neighbors of this node so we'll again create an iterator for this to iterate on the neighbors of this node so i can say okay so while iterator dot has next what to do i need to get the neighbor so my neighbor is it dot next and i'm going to say in degree of neighbor will be reduced by one now suppose if in degree of that neighbor after updating becomes zero okay so that means that neighbor is available to be processed so i will add it to the queue so queue dot add neighbor so i've added the neighbor into the queue that's it now when you uh, remove this node that means it it was not having any dependency right so we will add we will need to add this into the output so output dot add that's it and from this function i need to return output so you can see we have implemented all the steps that we have discussed we are pushing nodes into the queue with zero in degree and we are iterating over the neighbors 
we pop out one node we iterate over the neighbors we reduce their in degree by one and if some point in degree becomes zero we add that neighbor for future processing right so i think this should work so now let's go and uh, run our code uh, let's go to topological sort main i'm calling the method topological sort bfs let's run this so this is the method right so we are getting 0 1 2 3 4 5 for this graph that we have discussed 0 1 2 is here 5 is here this is like this this is like this and this is like this right so 5 is printed at the last so 0 and 1 we can start absolutely correct and we have 2 3 4 5 right i think this looks correct the output is correct and regarding the code we have already discussed the algorithm in detail i don't think there will be any doubts if you have any doubt please comment it down right that's all for this algorithm and we are done with the topological sort so you have understood and implemented topological sort now this algorithm has many other applications as well such as cycle detection in graph in operating systems it can be used in de deadlock detection because deadlock is also a kind of a cycle if you know how to find a cycle you can also de detect a deadlock then there is dependency resolution which we have already covered it is also used in sen sentence ordering critical path analysis course scheduling problem manufacturing workflows data serialization and context free grammars so if you are interested you can dive deep into these applications and learn more about how this algorithm is actually used in building these applications so before you leave make sure you like the video subscribe to our channel and i hope you learned a lot from this tutorial